Hey guys, Howard here with The Night Before, another classic from the Beatles Help album. A McCartney tune, predominantly, I'm guessing. And uh, what I'm going to do is take you through all the chords, show you how I like to play it on one guitar. And I'll also do uh, George's lead break as well, all right? Uh, but I want to talk about the rhythm a lot. Uh, so uh, let's map out the chords as usual. We're going to have lots of bar chords, okay? We're going to have a D. Then we're going to have an F. Then we're going to have a G7. And then we're going to have an A7. And that beginning, that intro, has a definite groove that you can cop on guitar. out into the song right so it's all about using your left hand to mute because your right hand's just basically doing this but you can hear those accents that's a classic groove where you're accenting on the downbeat and then accenting on the upbeat so accenting on downstrokes and accenting on upstrokes so let me do it really slow keeping uh, the parts that aren't accented really quiet. One more time. So you can see those accents just alternate, right? And you want to cop that in your left hand as well. You've got the chord that you're holding down. So your left hand is literally going. Etc. So you kind of put the left and the right hand together to play that groove. So I'll do that really slowly. It's all about that releasing the pressure just enough to mute the strings. You don't want to come off the strings, of course. And then we are into the song, okay? And uh, I'm just going to show you how I play it again, just mapping out the chords and playing the groove on one guitar. But of course, they've got two guitars going on and George is playing some staccato jabs on the chords. And you can listen to the recording for that. If you're playing with another player, you can add that in there. So for uh, the next part, I play it like this. So the chords are D, C, G, and A, okay? And the strumming on that is down, down, up, up, down. That will get you right in the pocket of the vocal and everything else, the basic groove of the song. Uh, but always keep your hands swinging, of course. the next two chords, there's a couple of ways that you can play it. I like to play it like this. I, I move the minor shape up here, B minor. You can see that on the screen. And then to the G minor 9, which is a really cool chord. You can see that on the screen as well. And that has that minor 7th in it as well, but there's that's usually the case with a minor 9, okay? But you can also play it like this. You can use this B minor, 2nd fret A string, 4th fret D string, 4th fret G string, 3rd fret B string, and then of course barring with your first finger. And you can make that minor ninth a smaller chord. So what I'm doing there is barring the first three strings at the 3rd fret, then 5th fret on the D string, and 5th fret on the B string. So if that's easier or you like that sound better, you can do that as well. I like it this way, it just sounds big and full to me.
can be a little bit tricky like that, but again, I like the uh, fullness of it, okay? So again, you move through the D, the C, the G, and the A a couple of times, and then you play that part a couple of times as well. turnaround right there. I always almost missed that G minor ninth chord, by the way. <laughs> like I said, it can be a little bit tricky to play. All right, so the turnaround on that is after you play the B minor to that minor ninth twice, then the turnaround is D, G, D, and F to G at the end, okay? And that's got a slightly little difference in the rhythm as well. So we go... kind of catch that G chord on the upstroke. Down, down, up, up, down. Pretty cool stuff. Classic Beatles. All right, so moving on. So what we do is we repeat all of that, right? We play it exactly as we did before, but we don't play that turnaround at the end where it goes to the F to the G. You just hang out on the D, okay? So the second time around after the B minor to the G minor nine, we simply play this. sit on that D twice with that same strumming pattern. So D, G7, and back to D, just uh, sitting on it, okay? And then we move to the B section of the song, or the bridge, however you want to look at it, and we're going to have A minor, D7, G, a quick C, back to G, then we'll have B minor, E7, and A7, okay? And it's played like this. So forth, okay? So let's go over that nice and slow. A minor, same strumming pattern by the way. Down, down, up, up, down. So we have A minor, D, D7, excuse me. And then on this G, we do this G and a quick C. So that's down, down, up, 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 down. got an upstroke on that C and then an upstroke coming back to the G. So let me do that nice and slow because that's a cool little pocket thing. And you keep strumming. So it's down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, up, down. And then we move to B minor. E7. And then right out the A7. So nice and slow we have. Run it all down again exactly as we played it the first time around, all the way through the B minor to the G minor 9, and we play that same first turnaround where they don't sit on the D chord, but they play that F to the G, and they do that right before George's guitar solo. So again, uh, the tail end of that next time around is going to be... And they go into the guitar solo. And the guitar solo, by the way, is played over this. Just a couple of rounds of that. 
okay? So let's talk about George's guitar solo. So, as is usually the case on the early Beatles stuff, he's got a pretty bright tone, okay? And uh, he's just got a collection of bends here. Uh, they are predominantly all whole step bends. Uh, but it's an interesting solo nonetheless. He lays it out in two octaves, so I'll show you how to play it in both octaves. Uh, if you play it by yourself, probably the lower octave is the one you'll want to choose, this one right here. <laughs> Okay, so let me just put the tab up on the screen and do that one nice and slow. You can do these bends. I, I push up on the uh, one on the G string uh, on both of the, the phrases, actually, and then pull down on the D string. But let me play that nice and slow for you. And uh, so this is how you would play it an octave higher. And that can be a lot of fun if you're uh, hanging out with another player, okay? So then we head right back to uh, the other parts of the song that we've already done. The ending is just a little bit different, so I will uh, cover that right here. So when you get to the end of the song, you know, you're playing the B minor to the G minor 9. So you can see they added that F chord. Everything else is the same. Uh, you've got that G to the D7, excuse me, D to the G7, right? And then you come back to the D, and then you go to F. And then you go to D and you end it. So that part, the very ending of the song, is played like this. And they end it, right? And then George plays that lick at the end. Again, doubling it in octaves, okay? And the lick is... That's a pretty cool lick. It's a little bit trickier than it seems. And then he does it in an octave. Pretty cool indeed. So there you go with The Night Before from the Beatles, including George's cool little guitar licks. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and all the best to everyone, as always. And uh, as Frank Zappa said, music is the best. <laughs>